Tonight, the Nats slugger, who had been known better as walking Juan Soto earlier in the year, will be a participant in the home run derby competition. By his star standards, he has struggled in the first half of this season, which finds the team with the worst record in baseball. And now there are reports the Nationals are open to trade offers after Soto turned down a huge contract offer. Joining us this afternoon, Jake Russell with The Washington Post. He's also the author of the book, 100 Things Nationals Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die. That's a discussion for another day right now, particularly because I think there are an awful lot of folks uh, around here who are going, uh, when they saw the, the story in the, the post, it was, oh no, not that, that they couldn't reach a deal and maybe, you know, make us an offer for our lone remaining star. But a lot of what we're seeing right now, it seems, is sort of where we are, first of all, in the baseball season, but then also in Soto's contract. Would you agree? Yeah, and I think if Nats fans had a list of things to do, number one would be <laughs> to tell the Nats to sign Juan Soto no yes. matter what. So that number of fans seems to be diminishing a little bit, given the fact that the Nationals offered Soto a record total contract, although the uh, annual average value isn't what anywhere close to what Soto wanted, around $29.3 million, I believe. And I believe Mike Trout makes around $35, $36 million a year. So if they could get maybe 2 or $3 million a year closer to that, then they might start talking and get a little more closer to a deal. But right now it seems pretty far away. This is the Midsummer Classic, and, and so you're not playing baseball right now. It's the All-Star Game, uh, and tonight the Home Run Derby, which could very well be a, a you know, kind of a, a spotlight on Juan Soto. He's in the thing. He uh, certainly has a home run stroke and, and do well there, and it, it, it raises his value likely, but it also uh, it occurs to me that it really amps up the pressure on the organization to get something done. Not to refute you, but I don't think the Nats are going to sign or not sign Juan Soto based on how he does in the home run derby. Oh, no, I, 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 I take your point, absolutely. It just, yeah. because it is such a spotlight. It's, you yeah. know, if you didn't feel uh, disappointed enough when Juan turned down the first offer, now you're really turning up the heat. Yeah, well, he performed fantastic in last year's home run derby mm -hmm. as well. So uh, it should be close to a repeat performance tonight. And I think if you're the Nats, you can kind of compartmentalize the business aspect of it and the fact that you have your star player on the national spotlight and more people are seeing the curly W on his head and you know, getting his name out there to more fans and to a bigger audience and potentially, even though they have the worst record in baseball, potentially to watching games You know, once the all-star break is over. I think the Nats can do a decent job of compartmentalizing the business side of you know negotiating with him and also the business side of you know more eyeballs on their product potentially with having their star player out on a big stage like the home run derby and of all places los yeah. angeles so i think i think it's a good thing for both sides that he's in it jake it also occurs to me too that this is a very 21st century baseball issue uh that that yeah it would be great for the home fans but this is the state of the business right now of baseball and and uh, uh maybe no one should be surprised at this because juan soto just happens to be the sort of the highest wattage star to whom it is happening right now but this is going on all over the league and to a number of other players as well it's where we are in the game yeah and i think the average fan it, they're, they're smarter than your average bear but at the end of the day, <laughs> fans still have a difficult time accepting the idea that someone, especially a 23-year-old, would reject a contract that's as big as $440 million. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that he has this super uh, powerful, uh, for lack of a better phrase, power agent who basically controls most of the top stars in the, in the baseball industry, who historically takes his clients to free agency to get top dollar no matter where it is um i think they have a difficult time contemplating the idea of rejecting a deal like that when in fact you know this is sports is all about market value mm -hmm. players are as across all sports are you know over the last five to ten years you've seen a big shift even in sports as big as football with as many players on a roster as football they're trying to get as much as they can for you know as you know as few years as possible and then cash in again but Juan wants, you know, the longest contract possible with the most years, or most uh, money possible. But you see the players, you know, realizing my 
career, my shelf life as an athlete is not very long. I'm putting my body on the line. I have a time to strike, which is right now. And you're seeing that across every sport. And that's what Juan Soto is doing. And I think that's the part that's hard for fans to, you know, accept and understand because most of us will never have this kind of situation where we reject a $29.3 <laughs> million a year deal. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever have that happen to me. <laughs> I know most as great a writer as you are. Yeah. I think that's probably true. <laughs> how much, <laughs> how much does the, the learners pending sale of this team figure into all this? I think that has a little bit to do with it as well. I think Juan potentially wants to see, you know, who the new ownership group is going to be. And I also do, on the other hand, I do think it's kind of strange that right now it's the learners who own the team and they're the ones putting this offer forward. So I'm not sure why they're, for lack of a better phrase, shortchanging him in terms mm -hmm. of annual, annual average value if they're not going to be the ones paying the rest of the contract. Yeah. So I'm not sure where the disconnect is between that. I'm not sure if there's something, you know, you know, behind the scenes, you know, a different kind of language that we don't understand that they're not talking about that's not being agreed upon. Um, there's a lot of little variables going on here, but I think uh, at the end of the day, I think that the Nats offered Juan what he wanted and or year wise and financially that he would sign it no matter who the owners are. I don't, <laughs> I would find it hard to turn down a $440 million deal, let alone a $500 million deal if they offered that to him. But maybe if they got close to that 500 million number, he would be more inclined to sign it. From your lips to uh, Boris's ears here, I think. <laughs> Jake Don't Rus put this on me. <laughs> no, okay. Jake, Jake Russell, the Washington Post. Thanks so much. Really appreciate your joining us, and I guess we'll all watch tonight and see how many hits out there in Dodger Stadium. Appreciate it. Yes, we will. Thanks for having me.